All right, welcome to the Collector Car Podcast. I'm excited to share another original owner story, and this time I'm going back further. So I had cars from the 90s and 2000s. Now we're back to the 70s, and I'd like to welcome Fred Jones. Fred, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. And thank you for asking. Yeah, man. It's so I'm so glad to have you on. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see I have a big Cincinnati Concours, uh, their webpage pulled up right now. So before we get to your original owner story, uh, you're very uh, heavily involved with the Concord. Tell us, what do you do with them? And then uh, obviously the Concord is coming up on June the 11th, and we can talk more about that in a second. But what's your history with the Cincinnati Concord? I started with them in 2003. My wife uh, worked for an authorized foundation in, in uh, finance. And uh, she told Dave She that I'm a big car nut. <laughs> so it took me a couple of years, but my first involvement was as a class host for the Ford 49er. I had to watch that car melt and fall apart all day. It's a fiberglass <laughs> and it's got those stickums on it. Yep. Um, they brought me on as a, a muscle car recruiter. That was my first mission love. Um, and then in, in 2006, um, we Toyota started our sponsorship. And they asked me to form a uh, collector agent class because I had physique and stuff. I knew a lot of folks. So anyway, I did both classes for a couple of years. And then one night they said, why don't you become chairman of the car selection committee? It's easy. <laughs> and, famous uh, words. <laughs> famous last words. Correct. I ended up, I worked from like six to six in the, the brewery. And then I came home and worked six to 12 on the, class the car, car selection chair um it was it was kind of a a drain oh yeah and eating and sleeping were two overrated activities <laughs> and um, fortunately i could close my office door in the brewery and take a quick nap <laughs> and close the blinds um since then i've you know i've been the car selection chair in the last three years i've also been on the board for the concord okay but, uh, yeah and and you judge heavily as well, right? You're judging at Amelia now and some other uh, concourse. Yeah, um, Amelia. Um, but last 10 years down to Hilton Head, uh, I've done Indianapolis, um, Columbus, things like that. Okay. Uh, a lot of local car shows. I, I do mark shows. I also do national uh, judging for Z cars at the Z okay. car. So. All right. Well, that's cool. Well, I pulled up. Uh, on our website here, just kind of the stuff that's happening this year. So uh, Friday night, if you're showing your car, there's always a little cocktail reception at the Summit Hotel. Saturday, I'm leading the countryside tour through a beautiful countryside. We leave Marymont and then we end up in a secret collection, which is really exciting this year. And then uh, Saturday night's the big hangar party. And then Sunday's the big Concours event. And then we have 70th anniversary of Corvette, 85th anniversary of VW Beetle. 75 years of Porsche. So a lot of cool cars that will be there. And you'll be running around all day, won't you? Well, like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, <laughs> we've got seven Porsche. we got seven Porsche um, classes uh, from 356 all the way to Outlaws and Specials. And we have a really a fabulous competition Porsche. we got the uh, Auto Fab from White Island Porsche, which ran down in Daytona and nice. Sebring. And uh, we also are going to be getting uh, the Theo Fabi Porsche, Porsche Arranged Indy car. Oh, wow. Indy, okay. you know, yeah. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's it, it's got something for everyone. You know, I'm really intrigued with our 356 class. Um, one thing I did realize that the, when we sent up for nominations, we'd have 175 Porsche people nominate their cars. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing with Corvettes. Uh, we only had 20 spaces for Corvettes, and we only had like 12 per class for the Porsche. So there were a lot of disappointed people, especially some of the later model, model Porsche owners who think theirs is unique. And in essence, it is to a Porsche file. Right, but right. We wanted to include something that basically people could see the difference and see the history and how things go. Uh, well, yeah, the positive side of people being disappointed, that just means the quality of cars that are showing up and will be there in person are just going to be the best of the best, right? Correct, correct. Uh, in the past few years, years ago, you could like, get into your car like three weeks before the show and get in. 
uh, we cut off our acceptances back in April. Oh my because, goodness! Yeah, wow. um, we we're, we're setting record for number of nominations over three hundred and ninety. Uh, cars accepted oh, more than 225 and we still got three cars that we're waiting for the the uh, nomination it was these are specific cars that we want we're not taking anybody else in the class but right just, uh, um, it, we feel that you're aware we we have the, the concord all park and i'm concerned about 225 cars because it's going to be pretty crowded and the crowds every year get bigger and bigger yeah and, uh, so I've always tried to shoot for 200, but it seems like my recruiters just ignore me. <laughs> and we'll, figure, we'll figure a spot. We'll put them somewhere, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, that's awesome. So again, the concourse coming up, the big day is June the 11th. Obviously love for you to join us on the countryside tour and the hangar party Saturday night. That's always a first class event. So let's talk about your original owner car. So first off, Tell us, what is it? And I'm going to overlay some pictures here so folks can see this incredible car. But tell us, what is this original car that you've had for so long? Okay. Um, it's a 1972 Datsun 240Z. I'm the original owner. Um, I bought it back in October 72. At the time, I was a dealer rep for Sohio downtown. And uh, I initially put my reservation in a century Datsun back and uh, you had to give them a hundred dollars deposit and it was like six months before you got the car um three months in uh SQ Datsun opened up in North Newport then Nissan gave them 350 cars for their initial inventory of that they had 50 Z's mm. so I borrowed money from one of my dealers went over and made a deposit on the chocolate Z the one I've got now and called since we said my wife's pregnant, you know, <laughs> I, I can't uh, to uh, you, uh, take the car. It says, don't worry, we've got six people waiting for it. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. So, but that's how I ended up. It was, it was my first new car I ever owned. I, it was raining and I we picked it up. I was frustrated, scared, coming up <laughs> 75. But uh, I've had it since new. It's, um, it's rusted out. When we moved to Cleveland and when we moved to Chicago, I did a, a restoration on it. And that's why we have uh, fiberglass quarters and fenders um, over a period of time. I had, I had a custom paint job from Charlie up in uh, Carversville in the Illinois, just north of where I live. Yeah, it was a two tone, it's a two tone mahogany and, and, and champagne. Uh, it originally started off as a show car and I won a lot of awards. In fact, I took first place in the Zcon National for in 2010 with the car. Oh wow! And it's still got the original paint from '79, and uh, it's starting to show age. Um, but then I started changing the suspension, the tires. I made it into a more of a track car, hill climb, things like that. We did some engine modifications, so it's it's a beast. <laughs> um, last time we did a dyno, it was 185, 185 horses at the wheel and it weighs close to 2000 pounds. Yeah. I, I, every single car event you're there with it. I've never seen you not drive this car. So you're driving it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to why did you, why did you want the Z? Like, what was it that, you know, you had to have it? Well, while I was in Vietnam, um, I, I was reading car magazines and they were talking about this new Z coming out. So that was one of the first things I did once I got out of the service uh, to make the deposit for the car because I really wanted to get one. Uh, before that, I had muscle cars. I had a Mustang, 67 Mustang GTA mm -hmm. that um, uh, my dad sold because I couldn't keep up the payments in Vietnam. So when I came back, I wanted to buy the Mustang back, but the guy told it. And said so. My second alternative was to get the C and become a sport sports car guy. Yeah. So what's interesting is you always hear the stories about the GIs coming back from World War II and wanting the bug eye sprites. You know, the little British roadsters. Now for you, it's you know you had a magazine. Did you see any cars? I'm assuming not in Vietnam that piqued your interest. Were they all just? Oh no! It was all military vehicles. Yeah, I figured um, so. 
I was in the 57 Trans Battalion, and we had pickup trucks, Ford 150s. <laughs> and um, my job was to allocate them to the company commanders. So when we get a shipment in, I would actually, me and my guys, we take one of them out of the pool, and we use it to drive around to Nang. And then we get this field commander come in and says, where well, blank, blank is my trick up, my pickup? You know, find the people. Oh, here it is. Here's the keys. <laughs> Give it to him. Then we go out and pull another one. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now this is going to be a really dumb question, but I'm curious who brought in the magazine that had these cars. Is it just the government would bring in a bunch of magazines for the, you know, military yeah, folks at the USO uh, at the rec center. I was at the in country bar in our city. It's where I was with the uh, headquarters company general staff. So we could see the magazines, you know, in the restaurants or the mess rather and stuff like that. And then the, the rooms, the team rooms, so that's that's when I first got a, a glimpse of the Z. Well, you know, I'm a Mustang <laughs> guy, and you know, you had a, a '67 GTA, so that's the only year they had GTAs. A mm -hmm. was for automatic, so if you see a '67 GT, you know it's a four-speed car. You always hear stories about you know the Vietnam so soldier that he's away and his cool car is in the garage and his parents keep it for him, but your folks said it's out of here. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, it was it, it it was not the most reliable car. It was I was drag racing it, and every Monday I had to take it to my dad's garage and get something fixed on it. Oh right, and, um, and he would push it off to the side. Says I got mechanics working on other stuff. They'll get to it. Uh, I got so frustrated one time. I took my car down to Woody Saunders on Monday, <laughs> and Woody Saunders called my dad and said, "Doc." Guess whose car is in my shop today? He blew a stack. He was oh, pissed. <laughs> but you, you won't let them work on my car. You do never take that car to somebody else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's my lesson. <laughs> That's your lesson. Yeah. So let's go to your Z. So you bought the Z. It was new. Um, what was that like the first couple of years? Were you in love with it immediately? Did you find headaches oh, yeah. about it? it? It was great. Um, we... Right after, about a year after we got the car, we moved to Cleveland. And my wife actually learned how to drive a stick in my car. And uh, we had the original clutch in it to almost uh, 80,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we moved to Cleveland, it started rusting. And at the time, I always had a company car. So I put it in the garage, and then I got transferred to Chicago. And there, we I started tearing it apart, you know, getting rid of the rust, putting the fiberglass fenders on and then I took it up to Johnny, uh, Charlie rather, and he actually corrected my mistakes on the body and did the, the custom paint. And uh, so after that, it basically sat in the garage you know, for 30 years. Uh, I drive it occasionally. Um, I still keep it in the garage under cover. And uh, once a year, you know, change the oil, antifreeze, check it all over. In the winter, I jack it up to save the tires. And, uh, but yeah, this year, the winter was so mild, I never did get it up on the box. You know, yeah. stopped yeah. to take it out and, and drive it too far, too far frequent this year. Was there any moment that you had it that it was, you know, all right, it's got to go, or was it always you're keeping it? I was, I had to turn down a lot of opportunities because I wanted to keep it. Mm. I could have picked up a 450 SEL, but I didn't have room. My wife was not going to allow me to park her car outside <laughs> of the garage. So, right, yeah. Well, that's good. It doesn't sound like you, you know it was too tempting to ever get rid of it. Sometimes I'm wondered, you know, after it reaches a certain point where maybe it's not in the best shape, you know, is it time to move it on or not? And what's that that keeps it in the garage? So it sounds like it. You had a spot for it, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I get a lot of offers to buy them when I drive around. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my uh, insurance a a agent uh, John Engel with Haggerty, he's calling every once in a while. Says, you know, we need to raise your declared value. <laughs> <laughs> your car's getting too expensive and stuff like that. Right. So, so every about every couple of years, he says that we need to put it at this point. And it's kind of rough. Uh, there's the uh, the Z's are really selling strong on BAT and. In fact, there was one that sold for $410,000, but that was an outlier. Most of them 
are in the 60 to 70,000 miles. And then there's some original primo cars that go over 100,000. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm mid range, you know. Yeah. Because it's modified and stuff like that. But, yeah. Uh, well, it sounds like it's still a great driver because, I mean, I saw you on a rally recently and you're always there at the end. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been very reliable. I think one year in Pennsylvania, I had a carpet stick that moving throttle and it just revved up. And um, I said, oh, I'm going to blow this engine, put it put it on the trailer. Took the, turned it off, turned it back on and hadn't had any problems since. Yeah. So what is it about this particular car? So, you know, I go back and I'm like, well, I love that car from three years ago. Now there's a new car I love today. You know, what was it about the Z that you just hung on to it? And as the newest, well, I, I guess I'm going to answer my own question here because part of it is, you know, we went into the doldrums of the seventies, I would mm -hmm. assume, you know, is that part of it? Like, you know, that was the last really cool new car. Yeah, it was. Well, the, 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 the models that came afterwards it really got soft. Yeah, you know, the, the 260, 280, the 300, 300 ZXs were basically touring cars, ran touring cars. 240Z Series 1 and 2 were sports cars. Right. And and that, I just never lost the uh, the appeal for the car. It was always my first and only one that I really wanted. I get asked a lot of times if I had all the money in the world, what would I buy? I don't know. <laughs> so you mentioned you know it does have a uh custom paint job on it what was the color original color on it it was chocolate brown oh okay. the butterscotch interior mm -hmm. so what's the future of the car are you going to do a full restoration put the steel back on it go back original colors or what are you going to do no just um, get it repainted fix some rust spots and, and leave it like it is the, the interior is immaculate um i re reupholstered the interior um, and so, it, and it, it's one of the few Z's without a crack dash. Hmm. I, I always had a wind shade up, a window shade up, or in a back when I first did, I started putting armor all on the dash, which I shouldn't have done, but it actually preserved it, kept right. it from, uh, from, from cracking. Now, do you recall you have a bunch of stickers in the rear or some of the, in the windows? What are most of those stickers from? Is that the hill climbs? No, well, yeah, one there are two hill climbs. There's the um, in the uh, Chicago Z Car Club that was part of uh, National and part of Cincinnati, Psych uh, Cincinnati Car Club Z Car Club. Um, I got uh, stickers from when I ran at um, Mid Ohio, my alumni sticker. So the, my quarter windows were just full. Every once in a while, I got to take something off to put it on. But uh, yeah, that, that's 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 basically it. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So when you repaint the car, is it going back to chocolate or are you going to do something different? I'm going to keep the same thing, same, same car. Color. The same colors you have now, the dual mm -hmm. two-tone? Yeah, okay. so these, those are 70, 79 Nissan colors. So, right. yeah. Wow, that's great. Well, I appreciate you being on the podcast just to talk about your original owner's story. Is there anything else you wanted to add or uh, any interesting stories over the last 40 years or 50 years? Oh, my gosh. Um, 51 years. Wow. That's amazing that you've had that car that long. Yeah. Um, did it leave you, you know, any interesting stories along the way that you'd like to share? Well, when we would come home to Cincinnati from Chicago, my son was like two or three years old when we started doing that. And uh, we throw him in the back hatch with his toys and drive down 65 and 74 to get Cincinnati. You can't do that now. No. Um, he did not have a baby seat. My wife would take him to the daycare, just sitting in the car. Yeah. And now she won't let me put the grandkids in. Right. So he says it's too unsafe. It is funny how that changed because we grew up with a 76 Ford Econoline van. You know, when we went cross country, my dad just took out the rear seat. Uh, it was, you know, two rows, two rows of bench seats. And you take out the last one and throw a bunch of sleeping bags and pillows back there and we all just play around like it's a play date in the back of the the van for you know eight hour drive <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you know the, the times were different back then times were different people. yeah for sure well thanks so much fred i know i will see you at the cincinnati concord what other uh events are you judging at in the future where folks might be able to see you uh, we're 
in the last part of June, I think June 27th, we're going, I'm judging at the Glendale Heritage Show in Glendale, Ohio. I've done that for the last four or five years. Um, during, I think the next concord I'm going to do is either Dayton, Detroit, or Cabo Beach. Mm. They all occur on the same day. <laughs> I've been going to Detroit for the last 15 years. I've done Dayton for the last three years, and Cabo Beach has invited me to come up there. So I'm going to have that decision to make prior to the, the, the 10th of September. Last year, I opted to go to Detroit. My family's up there, and it's a great time for me to be spend the weekend with my brother and his grandkids. Is that the and Eyes on Design? No, this is the that was this was the St. John's, but it's now the oh. Detroit Concourse that Haggerty bought. Yeah, okay. From July to September. Okay. Yep. Our our Seacon National is in San Diego, so I'm not planning to go there. <laughs> it's a little too far. I'll wait till it gets back to the east side of the country. Sure. Um, then in November, I'm going to probably judge again in Hilton. And I think this will be my my tenth year down there. Okay. And then hopefully I'll get invited back to Amelia. I've done it twice. Um, I I didn't think they were going to invite me back after the first first time because they had me judging Duesenbergs. <laughs> I had no clue what, <laughs> <laughs> what one of the things the contacts I've, I've made through this being the uh, car selection chair I was able to talk to the, the uh, folks at ACD and have their Duesenberg experts spend two hours with me prime, prime me prime me um, uh, learn the, the, the different things on Duesenberg sure and uh, so I thought I was at least halfway into the game when I got down to a million I found out the lead judge was the uh, car, the Duesenberg judge from Pebble Beach. The, <laughs> the, the other guy was um, um, the executive director of Royal Royce Owners Club, and they knew everything about every one of the cars. It was like after the first one, myself and the McPherson student, we just sat there and we'll listen to them. And when we get back to <laughs> the learn, the, absorb, yeah. yeah, we were just observers. Right, right. Um, in fact, um, Perry Yeggies. Duesenberg was in the class, and it was obvious his, his Duesenberg was head and the shoulders above all the others that were yeah. in, the, in the class, and he took best of show. So, yeah, yeah that, that was the fun part. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Well, cool. Well, I will see you on the show field, I know, and I'll probably see you before then, so really appreciate yeah. you being on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.